Hello everyone, we're back again with another critique video. Today in the channel we have Morticia, also known as Bloodflower on TikTok. I've seen her videos a multitude of times, a myriad of times. I have been told to react to her on multiple different occasions and have procrastinated, honestly speaking, because I cannot stand this woman. It is ridiculous. She is a student in microbiology or may very well be qualified as a microbiologist officially. I'm not sure and neither do I care. What I do know is that she is in the business of spreading absolute misanthropic misinformation obsequiously. She is an obsequious lickspittal to the mainstream medical establishment in Big Pharma, which is hilarious. So anyway, let's just jump right into this video. It has no title since it's on TikTok. TikTok videos don't really have titles, so let's just get right into the video. But first, please subscribe to my Patreon. It's linked in the description below. It's also in the top left corner of the screen. There is a $2 month tier, a $5 month tier, and an $8 month tier in order to gain access to one week early uploads, one extra video per week, ad free content, and uncensored content. And also buy my book Contraindicated if you haven't already. That is out now, linked below in the description. There are paperback, hardcover, and ebook options, and the audiobook will be coming later as I am in the process of recording that and editing it, but that may take some time. So, that being said, now let's jump right into the video. Okay, so th this is this is muted here. Science incoming. No. The person who found a cure for cancer but died after announcing on this day, December 30th. I don't know the veracity of that claim. There are conspiratorial claims that have been made about that. I don't think that they're implausible by any means. In fact, I would go as far to say that... Because of the fact that we know for a fact that Big Pharma is in the business of profiting off of people's sickness, we absolutely know that for a fact. And cancer is one of the major killers in the entire Western world. So if you were to give a cure for cancer, that would take away sales from Big Pharma immensely. So let me ask you something. Which is worth more? The cancer cure being released and all the money being lost as a result of that, that being what that result is worth? Or... You may speculate what you may wish to with that information. Hi, I'm a microbiologist. I like to use TikTok to spread science education and to also- Absolutely not. No, you don't. Miseducation. Dangerous misinformation. The very thing that you are claiming right now on the screen that you contribute to combating. False. I do that. Morticia. That dangerous misinformation, like what's being referenced in this video, because it directly- Really? Also, let me just get this myth out of the way. Information itself, whether it's fraudulent information, false information, or true information, is not in and of itself dangerous. The adoption of that information is dangerous. Information itself cannot be dangerous. That itself is not a very prudent thing to be promulgating, because that philosophy is what leads to censorship, if you believe information to be inherently dangerous and damaging. So let me just get that out of the way. The adoption of the information or misinformation is deleterious, is damaging, is harmful, which is why I'm doing what I'm doing as a health commentator within the sensible space, typically, of carnivore. Actively hurts real vulnerable people. These Covered that. Conspiracies don't exist in a vacuum and they are often directed to or even forced upon cancer patients. No information is forced upon people in the United States, not as of yet. However, things around us are eroding. So hopefully this video ages well or the parents of cancer patients because they prey on the vulnerabilities and anxiety and fear of people who are dealing with a very serious disease. Because yes, that information does do so. Not the information typically that you chastise and pillory, but the information that I do. Like the information you are going to espouse here within this video. People, their lives. This kills people. Cancer patients who seek out alternative medicine or who go to homeopaths or other quack fake medicine. Homeopathic medicine and naturopathic medicine is not quackery. You do realize that the area that you are in professionally focuses around allopathy. Allopathy really having been around in its colloquially known nature for just a little over a century. Ever since John D. Rockefeller came in and Vin Addictively sank his claws into the naturopathic medical industry and slandered them. I wrote about this extensively in my book, The Entire History of the Pharmaceutical Industry, Contraindicated. Once again, please buy that book listed in the description below. Ridiculous, Morticia. That is once again an example of misinformation. F***ing hell. Stop making TikTok videos for the sake of the general public and the safety of that demographic.
treat their cancer see a 250% increase in death rate as opposed to conventional treatment. Okay, interesting. 250%, that is a relative outcome statistic. What are the absolute values? Let me give an example of why I'm actually saying that. Just a few months ago here in Illinois, it was 4 degrees Fahrenheit, and the next day it was 9 degrees. That's a 125% increase in temperature, but it was effectively the same f thing. So why don't you tell us the absolute values, Morticia? And even if those absolute values are large, let me tell you what I suspect to be the reason behind that and underpinning that. The homeopathic industry, the naturopathic, holistic area of health is also vastly skewed in the information they espouse as well. For example, most of it that I see is utilizing plants, eating them to ameliorate cancer, quote unquote, when actually most of the hard scientific evidence with respect to biochemistry and cellular biology that we have, and that I understand, shows that a propitious approach to exacerbating certain cancers and in certain conditions within certain people seems very clearly ostensibly to be eating plants and carbohydrates especially. We'll get to carbohydrates in a little bit, very soon actually. Not all of the information within the homeopathic, naturopathic, holistic area of health and medicine is of veracity either. We have an entire subgroup, subsidiary and ancillary to the holistic area of health information that is known as raw veganism. Yeah, they're not voracious either, so. This kills people covered that. Like I read about it on the internet and nobody ever lies on there for money or for fame or notoriety. Straw man. You mean I shouldn't just believe something that I read on the internet because somebody said that it was true? Straw man. Cancer isn't just one disease. Correct. Even a few dozen diseases that are correct. Similar. See, cancer is ultimately just the unregulated growth of cells within our bodies. Well, sure, yeah, but there's <laughs> there's other aspects at play. It's a metabolic derangement. It's a metabolic disorder. It's demonstrable at this point. It's patent. These are our cells. It's our DNA. It's our body. It's not some external pathogen or toxin from outside of the environment. No, 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 Morticia, yes. Do you think that our DNA is encoded to cause cancer within us? That DNA, our genes, having evolved for billions of f years, they know what the hell they're doing. There are externalities, like, I don't know, hmm, glucose, a six carbon aldehyde or aldohexose. Aldehydes being functional groups in chemistry, but compounds that have the propensity and outright do exactly what I'm about to say they do, which is destroy lipid rafts, tear cell membranes to pieces, bind to DNA and cause mutations to it, and in a high enough concentration, but still relatively low, kill cells outright. That causes inflammation as well, inflammation being the underpinning EDI of all major killers in the entire Western world and soon to be the entire world. A goes to B goes to C, Morticia. See, these are externalities. By the way, the glucose I'm speaking about is created endogenously within the body. That is not toxic. It's the same molecule, but it's a demand-driven process when it occurs within your body. Glucose is essential for human life. By the very manner of me sitting upright in this chair and speaking to you or Morticia here, there are muscles firing and twitching as I speak, as I move my hands in an animated way. That requires glucose glucose, but not exogenous glucose because that is a toxin. So anyway, those things matter, Morticia, and those are externalities. External toxins. Pathogens there. Inflammation is a pre-programmed response within the body that occurs when the body has perceived damaged tissues or a potential invading pathogen. So that can also be a reason. Or how about the fact that glucose itself causally, causally via the Warburg effect, which was discovered by Otto Warburg, who won the Nobel Prize for this in the 1920s, exactly exacerbates already pre-existing cancer because the DNA within the cancer cells are damaged. They require 40,000% more glucose to survive than other normal functioning cells do. So 400 times more, anyway. Coming into us and making us sick, we are what's making us sick. See, there are millions of processes and chemical reactions that are happening in our bodies at all times. Correct. And takes is minor errors in any one of these processes for cancer to develop. Okay, but your genes will not make that mistake, Morticia. I'm sorry. Your ideology here is that the human body is innately flawed. It is not. Those genes, once again, have evolved for billions of years. There are externalities that can interfere with those cellular mechanisms and those biochemical mechanisms. But you just perfunctorily dismissed it, irresponsibly and inappropriately. Wow, and you're a microbiologist? Mm. Microbiologist here, folks. By the way, this is what you're getting from universe. Just so you know. There's not one single cause. And when we consider things like DNA damage or DNA mutations, which also help drive cancer. Okay, well, I just covered that, didn't I? Those aldehydes that I was speaking about, those are the primary oxidation products within seed oils. Fun fact, HNE is a common one. Formaldehyde, there you go, there's one. Of course, some aldehydes are worse than others. 
and we know that every single person on the planet has unique DNA, how can there ever, ever be a universal cure for cancer. Okay, so once again, your philosophy here is that the human body and all of the genes that may present within someone and that do present within someone, and even if there's variation between them, since there's variation between them, then there's no way to fully cure cancer. But that would only be the case if those genes hadn't evolved for billions of years. Even though there's variation between our genes, they've still evolved for billions of years invariably. Invariably. So, Morticia, what the hell are you talking about? Is this what you're taught as a microbiologist? Hmm when cancer itself isn't even one disease. Yes, but it has one common denominator, that being DNA damage or DNA distortion. It's hundreds and hundreds of different diseases that all have this commonality. Fantastic. Regulated cell growth. Fantastic. This doesn't change anything about what I just said. Cancer can happen at any time in anybody's body, regardless of how healthy or unhealthy you are. Let's just translate. Healthy and unhealthy, I'm going to presume that she means functioning at an indicated level physiologically, which that's a threshold, I guess you could say, because that doesn't necessarily preclude the existence of disease within those systems concerned. Sure, fine. But just to be able to conceive and conceptualize this properly, functioning at an indicated level. Okay, fantastic. If you are not functioning physically, physiologically indicated, the probability that the reason behind that is due to poor dietary input and poor lifestyle behavior, in other words, externalities that you dismissed earlier within this very video, is quite high. So if there is an externality involved that can be controlled, i.e. diet and lifestyle, inappropriate lifestyle behaviors, then yes, theoretically, you very well could curtail the degree to which you raise your propensity to developing cancer and other metabolic diseases, in fact, or diseases characterized by metabolic derangement. <sighs> it really is that simple. This is a very painful reality, and it's uncomfortable to face, and it is- Well, it's just false, what you just said right there. It's just absolutely fundamentally false, and I covered why. So it would be a scary reality. It would be a daunting, dismal reality, Morticia, if it were reality. And it's f***ing not. Easier to accept that it's a part of some great big conspiracy theory, and that the government is hiding a cure, or the government is giving us all cancer for population control. Well, <laughs> I will say that- Easier to accept that than to accept that the world is an imperfect place filled with pain and that bad things happen to undeserving good people. But conspiracy theories like this, while they may seem innocent and harmful- <sighs> The difference between a conspiracy theory and the truth typically is about two months. Morticia. That's the difference in many cases. They directly hurt real people. Not only are they- No, we covered this in the beginning complete contradiction to reality? No, you're a complete contradiction to reality in terms of the information that you promulgate from what I've seen, invariably the case. What we know of the human body? What you don't know of the human body is evinced here. Prey on vulnerable people. <laughs> Projection. Often hurt real people, like children whose parents don't know any better. So please stop. You please stop. Seriously? Wow. Okay, anyway, Morticia, just complete nonsense as I suspected and expected. Yeah, there's really nothing else to say. These are the outcomes of universities. This is what you're getting, folks. So if you enjoy this, then go ahead. Keep advocating for people to go to university. But if you're like me, you would encourage people to avoid said institutions. So anyway, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like, please subscribe to the channel, leave your thoughts in the comment section below, and also, once again, subscribe to the Patreon if you haven't already, and buy my book again, Contraindicated, a closer look and revision of mainstream health axioms that have perpetuated illness, disorder, and disease for over a century, if you have not bought that book quite yet. It's in the description below. And also, if you're attempting to further ameliorate inflammation and you've already adopted a carnivorous diet bereft of any plant material or carbohydrates to speak of, and you just feel like you need an extra punch or an extra kick, I would refer to the link on the screen below, the Cerule link. But before you do that, I would recommend learning about the products first, of course, so you can refer to the video in the top right corner of the screen or in the description below, depending on if YouTube wants to show it in the top right corner of the screen, called Cerule Products, which is a full elucidation video on what those products are, who should take it, why you should take it, etc., etc. Or you can refer to the description below and find the interview that I did with Professor Bart K, which elucidated the products even further and the business itself. So go ahead and refer to that link below to get 10% off your first order when you sign up for monthly deliveries. And also email me at goki14 at gmail.com if you have any questions at all and or would like to figure out how to 
receive those products for free because who in their right mind would not want that? So with that being said, join me next time when we react to someone else that is arrogant and complacent, irresponsibly complacent with respect to their own perceived knowledge about human nutrition, health science, cellular biology, biochemistry, etc., etc. So see you then.